Welcome to another one of our HubSpot tutorials. This is CJ with The Gist. We're an inbound marketing and growth agency and certified HubSpot solutions partner based in Buffalo, New York. Let's dive in. This video is designed to show you how to use the tool that HubSpot is, is perhaps most famous for, which is their workflows tool. This is how you do automation. Right. People use automation for a variety of reasons. Most people think about automation um, as a way to send automated emails and follow ups and drip campaigns as part of a larger lead nurturing effort. But the reality is, is that um, automation really has just as much value for internal lead um, communication, task management, um, contact record organization, list segmentation and things like that. But you do it all within the same tool. So I'm going to show you how easy it is. Um, to create a workflow. So when you want to go to automation, click automation and then workflows. Then create new workflow. Um, when you're in here, you can pick from some templates to start or you can start from scratch. Now, what's nice is you can trigger workflows based on a variety of objects. You know, they could be around contacts, companies, deals, tickets or quotes. Basically what this means is that when a change to something within an object happens, that would be the enrollment trigger. So for example, if a deal is moved from uh, demo scheduled to demo completed um, and you want something to, to automate, a series of actions to automate when something like that happens, you would do a deal-based workflow because that's something that's happening around a deal. Um, in most cases, I shouldn't say in most cases, but the vast majority of workflow is definitely centered around contacts, right? Because when contacts visit your website, uh, fill out some forms or take other actions with your business, um, um, most, most people use workflows um, that center around contacts. So for the sake of that um, uh, example, we're going to have this workflow be contact based. Now, the first thing that you do when you're building a workflow, I mean, aside from name it, right, is set the enrollment triggers, but I am gonna name it. So I'm gonna say um, product inquiry follow-up. And this is gonna be a workflow that um, triggers when somebody inquires about a product on our website. And the way they do that in this particular instance is by filling out a form. So when I click set enrollment triggers, what you can see is that a whole lot of things can trigger an enrollment in a workflow, right? It could be as something as simple as somebody changing a contact property. Let's say you have a contact property called current CRM, right? This is a custom contact property I created as part of this tutorial series. And maybe when somebody changes it to HubSpot, and this could be an internal team member going into one of your contacts and saying, oh, I just found out this person is using HubSpot, um, I'm, and they change that property to HubSpot. That could literally be the enrollment trigger. And maybe that triggers um, a task to the contact owner to, hey, follow up with this person, see if they'd be interested in a free HubSpot audit or um, segment them on a certain list or maybe even send a marketing email to that particular contact. Right. So um, there are just so many different enrollment triggers. Um, that could begin a workflow and it would be impossible to go over all of them in this video. So for the sake of time, I'm just going to go with form submissions. I recently created a new form called new client inquiry form. So I'm going to say if, if anybody fills out this form on any page, doesn't matter which page, um, they're going to be enrolled in this uh, workflow. Now you can also further segment, segment this by saying and you know, contact property, life cycle stage is none of customer, right? Because maybe one of your customers um, inquires about a product, but you want to talk to them a little bit differently. So you can say is none of customers. What I would do is something different called an if then branch, which actually I'll show you. So let's work with that. So let's just keep um, the, the generic form submission as uh, the only um, enrollment trigger. Now you go into your actions, right? And this is where you can send it. internal communication, external communication. You can assign contacts, create deals, tickets, tasks, manage lists, uh, and keep certain properties updated. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is something called an if-then branch. <clears throat> and I'm going to base this around, um, you know, whether or not somebody is a customer. So uh, because if they are a customer, I want to talk to them a little bit differently. So let's say contact property, life cycle stage is any of customer, apply filter. So I'll say this is customer and otherwise they are not a customer. 
So I'll click save. So now if they are a customer, um, I don't want to send them a generic email. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to send an internal notification to um, me as well as um, whoever their contact owner is. And I'm going to say, you know, new inquiry from, um, you know, and I'll say their first name. I can do their last name. I can say whatever. And I could just say follow up. Um, what I can also do is uh, create a task. And I'll just, you know, put this in. So now we have a task for the contact owner. Um, something else that you might want to do is create a deal. And maybe you have a deal. Um, maybe you have a separate current client upsells, right? So you're going to create that deal in there. Um, and you can set, select which qualified opportunity, which stage you want to put it in, right? So um, here are just a couple basic um, options. But now let's say it's not a customer. And uh, maybe you want to send them an email. Right now, I don't have any emails created yet on this demo account, but if I did, they would be pre saved, right? And now you simply just pick which email that you want to send. It is as simple as that, right? And then when you want to maybe send that email, maybe something else you want to do is you want to set the property value, right? Um, maybe they were a subscriber or there was no value, but now they're an opportunity, right? So you update their life cycle stage to opportunity. Um, maybe there's um, if let's say this was on a, a page about lead generation, um, then you can also say uh, set property value, um, product or service interest. And because this is a multiple checkbox, you want to append to current values, not replace all of them. So let's say they were already interested in email. Now you're saying, well, they're also e interested in lead generation. Um, you can add them to certain lists, um, add to a static list here. Um, Obviously, I wouldn't add them to that list. And uh, as you can see, right, there's just so many ways that that you can leverage workflows to make your process more efficient, not just through external communication, but also through internal communication, task management and organization. So um, the main point of this video was to show you how easy it is to create workflows and how many options you have, not just for enrolling people in workflows, but the subsequent actions you take as a result. If you're interested in learning more about workflows, I would highly encourage you to take us up on our free HubSpot strategy session or just get in touch with us. As you should know, we are absolutely here to help. Thank you. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you wanna dive deeper into this topic, suggest we do a new tutorial on a new topic, or if you wanna learn more about our HubSpot onboarding and support services, head on over to thegistcontent.com slash HubSpot. Thanks for watching.